Hello everybody. Um, today we are taking a deep dive into Biblio Commons. So Biblio Commons is the library's online catalog of everything that we have in our collection and the collections that are shared with our neighbors, neighboring libraries in Perth County. So today we're going to talk about how you can log in, how you manage your account, all the different features that you can access with Biblio Commons, and just how great it is. Okay, so let's get started. Um, to find Biblio Commons, you can navigate to the library's web page. So again, this is stmarypubliclibrary.ca, and this is our home page. So you can see here all the different online features that we have, and you can find different information here before you even get to my to your uh, account. But today we are going to click Catalog in My Account, which will take us over to Biblio Commons. So this is the Catalog in My Account. To log into Biblio Commons, we're just going to go up into the top right corner. I'm going to press login slash register. So if you've ever logged in before, um, you will be able to get back in. You don't actually have to sign up for Biblio Commons. You kind of already, already have an account automatically. You just have to activate it. So with the information it's looking for, it says username and barcode, which is all the numbers on the back of your library card. And your PIN number will be the last four digits of your telephone number when you signed up for a library card if you did it in-house at the library. If you have signed up since online using our online card sign-up form, um, you will have set your own PIN number. If you have any um, doubt or you can't remember the PIN number that you set or the PIN number that you were assigned, or perhaps you've changed your phone number since you signed up for your library card, just send us an email at libraryinfo at stmaryspubliclibrary.ca and we will uh, certainly be able to get that information to you. Likewise, if you don't have your physical card anymore, but you need to know your barcode, barcode number. Okay, so I'm gonna enter all the digits on the back of my card. And you can change your username once you get logged in for the first time. And you can change it to something easier to remember. So mine, for example, is just Rebecca Webb. Okay, and then my PIN number. And you can also click Remember Me on this device if you don't want to have to do that every single time. And then we'll click Log In. Okay, so it knows that I have never logged into my account before. So it's going to ask me to set up some features here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Continue to Account Setup. You can enter an email address so that you'll receive notifications to that email address and if you ever get locked out or anything like that, this is the email address that you will need to recover it. So I'm going to use that email. Um, so this is that email conveniently that if you should have any questions about your barcode or anything like that, library info at St. Mary's Public Library .ca is the email that you'll need to recover that information. I'm going to say And the library was founded in 1904, so I always try to put that in. See if it goes back that far. It does. Okay. Um, so now we will click continue. So like it says here, sorry, I just want to go back. This email portion, you'll receive reminders about your borrowing activity. So for example, um, if something's coming due, you can get a notification about that. And here is where you can create a username. So I recommend creating something straightforward that it'll be easy for you to remember next time you sign in. So I'm just going to use St. Mary's Public Library. Oh, somebody's already using that name. Okay, so we'll put 13 there because it's the 13th day of the month right now at the time of recording this video. I'm also going to accept the terms and conditions. Now you are more than welcome and I would recommend reading the terms of use there before you sign up, but nothing scary in there that I'm aware of. And I'm going to complete my account setup. So really easy to do that. Um, really quick, just a few steps and you're good to go. So I'm going to continue to my account now. And one key thing I want to show you here is borrowing history. So we get asked this a ton in the library. Do you know if I've already checked out this book? Or can I look back and see the items that I've borrowed before? Well, the answer is, is here. We cannot, as library staff, see the items that you have checked out because that is your private borrowing history, so it's not something that we keep. However, if you sign up for this Biblio Commons and you use your account online, you can enable your borrowing history so that you can see all of the items that you've already checked out 
when you check them out. You can add them to shelves. We're going to get into that in a minute. And it's just a really great way to keep track. So I'm going to click Enable Borrowing History. And my new information has been saved. Now, along the right side here, we have a couple additional settings. So I recommend setting your preferred library. So what that is going to do for you is when you're searching through the catalog and looking at different items, that will allow you to see if instantly if an item is available for you at the library of your choosing. So I'm going to select St. Mary's Public Library. And a couple more options. You can hide spoiler content. You can hide offensive content. I'm going to click Save here. Okay, so now those preferences are saved. Down at the bottom left, it says all done, explore your new catalog. That's where I would like to go. So a lot of people really like this service because what it allows you to do is place all your holds, wait for them to be available for you. If you're somebody who enjoys browsing the library, you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, but what this allows you to do is place holds so that you can um, get everything you want arranged and then what we do is we pull the books off the shelf for you we let you know when they're there ready for you to pick up and you just come on in and grab those items okay so at the moment of course we're in the middle of this um, pandemic issue and we're practicing social distancing so as you know the library is not currently open but this might be a very useful tool in the future when placing holds and picking it up depending on what library services look like when they resume um, and if we resume slowly as well so I definitely recommend getting familiar with this service. Okay, so this, to start, is my library dashboard. So the, some of the information that's displayed here includes your checked out items. So if you have anything that you physically checked out from the library, it would show up here. Any of your on hold items, so anything that you've placed a reserve on would be right here. Now reserves at this moment in time, because of the pandemic again, um, we are not allowing reserves to be placed or holds to be placed on items. The reasoning behind that is if we allowed those holds to be placed the whole time that we were closed, when we come back, we might be overwhelmed and we're not even totally confident that our system can handle that many holds at a time. Okay, the other item here is borrowing history. So again, if you enable that borrowing history, it's available here for you. If you happen to have any fines, they would be here. Now this checked out tool will be a good tool to check when the library does allow for items to come back. Because we've all had our items at home for quite some time now, it's a good tool to know what you do have at home and what needs to come back to the library. That said, um, there is no fines right now. You don't need to worry about due dates or anything like that. Okay, so this right here, to say it says get started, my four later shelf. So keep a reference of the items you would like to read, listen to, or watch in the future. When these items become available, they will show here. So the reason that this is here is because, like I said, we don't have holds enabled right now. So this is a very useful tool to be using to keep track of things that you do want to read or items that you do want to access when we're able to do so when the library service resume, resume, resumes. Excuse me. So I'm going to click go to shelf here. And here we are. So if you know off the top of your head the items that you're already looking for, so perhaps you've been um, listening to CBC or you've been on Goodreads and you've got a whole list going already, <clears throat> excuse me, of things that you're wanting to read when we reopen, you can click add a title and search by the keyword. So let's go from the ashes, very popular book title right now as part of Canada Reads this year and I've just heard about it I know that I want to read it and here I see it here so I don't have the option to place the hold but I do have the option to add it to this list so I found it I found the format I'm gonna make sure that if I want to read the physical book copy I'm looking at that copy and here I am it's a book it came out in 2019 you'll also see below downloadable and ebook so those are different items that you could also put on this list too this system, Biblio Commons, fully integrates Download Library and the Libby app and mirrors all the items that you will see on there. So you can actually interact with those items from the Biblio Commons uh, system. So I'm going to add the physical book from the ashes to this list. Okay, then I'm going to click out and see if it's there. There we go. Okay, so 
when the library uh, reopens, I'm going to be able to place my hold right away, and um, it'll just be there for me when I'm able to do that. So uh, there's going to be probably a time when we say, okay, you can place your holds, and everyone's just going to be click, 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 click all the way down that list. So this is the For Later shelf, again, that I really recommend for those of us who are going to be compiling a list of items that we want to read or watch um, when the library reopens for that service. Okay, some other features I want to point out is completed. So you can use your borrowing history to actually add titles to this list. So you might take out five books but only read two of them and you can add the two that you completed to this shelf because maybe you were going on a trip or what have you and you returned those other three books but you still want to read them at some point. You can add those to your for later shelf as a reminder uh, and you can add the ones you finished to your completed shelf. That way if in the future you're wondering if you've already read a book, you can have a reference point to come and look at the shelf that you've completed to know, yes, I did read that, okay? Instead of, you know, what most of us do where we read a chapter and realize that things sound a little bit too familiar and then you kind of realize that you've read it. So this is a good way to avoid that. There's also an in-progress shelf here as well. You can create your own shelves too. So you can tailor this to suit you however you think it might work best for you. I definitely encourage you to have a look at shelves and lists as well. So I'm just going to click back here to my user profile. So that's just an overview of the shelves that are available here. Now here is lists. So lists is another tool for you to keep lists of books that you want to read. So you could keep a list called just books that you know um, these are 20 books you want to read. You could keep a list of DVDs and add 20 DVDs that you know you're going to want to watch. All that type of thing. So make this work for you however, however you see fit. All right, now let's go back to the home page of BiblioCommons. I'm just going to click home here on the St. Mary's Public Library logo. This is what the home page looks like. And it's going to display for us um, some different categories. So if you've ever used Libby or Download Library, it's kind of the same idea. It's also going to display for us some recent staff lists. So all the staff in the Perth County Information Network, our neighboring libraries, we um, are able to, as staff, create lists for you. So you can see that a lot of people have been busy creating lists here. So we've got a cookbook collection, Carol Baskin's reading list, if anybody's uh, watched Tiger King there on Netflix, that one's for you. Spin a yarn, poetry in ebooks and audiobooks, as April was Poetry Month just passed. Down here, if we go a little further, we see um, recently reviewed books. So these are ones that users, BiblioCommons users like yourself, have left reviews on that you can read. So let's say we open this Precious Gifts by Danielle Steele. And um, there'll be some reviews there to give you an idea of whether or not people enjoyed the book. Now keep in mind, um, everyone has different tastes. So just because some one person doesn't like it um, doesn't mean you shouldn't give it a chance, but it at least gives you uh, an idea, I know I personally appreciate reviews. Okay. Okay, so as you can see here, now we're looking at the, the book title of Danielle Steele's Precious Gifts. So what we see here is um, there's a few reviews, there's four of them, and if I scroll down, here's the reviews as well. So you can see um, different users, just like, I, just like yourselves, have left these reviews from all over the world, really. Okay, and let's go. Okay, so other things I'm going to point out here on this page is you can see that um, this Precious Gifts actually comes in a few formats. So we have a physical book copy of this, we have an ebook, we have an audio book on CD, and we probably, it looks like, have a large print. So there is a large print available. So you can actually place your hold or place on your shelf any of these formats. So you just select the one that you want and it will show you where that title is available. So again, if you put in your preferred library as the St. Mary's Public Library, it will actually instantly tell you 
hey, this item is available, is on the shelf at a preferred library so that you know that it's on the St. Mary's Public Library shelves. Okay, um, and it'll also show you availability by location. So if you're feeling like you might want to go for a little bit of a drive, you can certainly check other locations and see if it's on the shelf there. And you can also place it on your for later shelf. The other thing that it's going to do is show you the number of copies, the number of available copies, and the number of holds. So if this is a very popular item, you might see some holds here. And depending on how many holds there is and how many copies there is, that'll give you a pretty good idea of how long you might have to wait for the book if it is in demand. So for example, if there is 20 holds, um, but there's actually 10 copies of that book, you really don't have that long of a wait because there's so many copies for people to read. Okay, so that's just kind of an idea of what is available in each book record on Biblio Commons. We also have the synopsis here for you. You kind of want to read that inner cover. So that's what this um, little blurb is designed to do for you so you can get an idea of the book. And of course, if we go down, we have the publisher details. You can check out the full record. You can also check out some additional information there. So here you go, you can see how many pages, the content, all of that kind of thing. Some themes here available for you. Sometimes there is also age suitability. So people will add um, what ages they think that the content is, avail is appropriate for. Now along the right side, so again, we're still on this one book record. Along the right side, there is a heading that says explore further. So this is very useful if you're kind of browsing around, you don't know exactly what you're looking for, you're just looking for your next read. Explore further is a good tool for you because you can pick out certain aspects of the title that might help you find your next read. So for example, we have subject headings, so absentee fathers, domestic fiction, um, we have staff lists that include these titles. This might be a good one if you uh, click on these lists. It might lead you to some other titles that are like it. And again, just regular lists that include this title. Okay. Now let's navigate back again to the home page. Okay, and here we are. So, we also see here, so we were just looking at recently reviewed books. We can also see recently reviewed DVDs. So you might notice that some of these are new kind of um, blockbuster DVDs, recently reviewed music, recently rated, so things that people have put a star rating, and recent lists. Okay, so let's have, a, let's get a good, this is a good tip that um, people usually appreciate getting. So of course we can search items up at the top here. I'm going to recommend, for those of you who are real film buffs and you enjoy watching DVDs and you get um, your kind of DVD fix at the library, this is a good tip for you. So if you click on to advanced search in the top right underneath the search bar, you can narrow down your search significantly. So if you go down to the bottom here, we've got availability, you can see, you can make it available see the things that are available at your preferred library, so for St. Mary's Public Library, for example. You can select the collection that you're looking for, you can select the audience, and you can select the content. So the really useful thing I find here is I'm going to select DVD and Blu-ray disc because I'm in the market today for just some brand new movies that I haven't seen yet. Okay, so I'm gonna select Blu-ray and DVD. And then what I'm going to do is select the date published. So if I'm looking for new movies, I'm going to type in the criteria 2020 and just leave it at that because I think that's only gonna show me movies that were published in 2020 and search. And this is again, um, a useful tool for those of us that will add ourselves to those long hold list for these popular titles. Also, it's going to allow you to see if there's an express copy of that item. And you can go through without even clicking on the record and just for later, for later, for later, to make sure that when we do enable holds again, that, that will all be available for you. So here you can see exactly why I typed in that search query, because now I'm only seeing those new movies. So Knives Out, Parasite, Jojo Rabbit, Jumanji,
Frozen 2, all of those popular films that people are really going to be after, all here for me to go through and place them on my For Later shelf or place them on hold in normal times. Okay. Now, further to that on my search, I can narrow down my, my criteria at the side here. So I can filter my results to just items that are available right now at the St. Mary's Public Library. Um, I can filter to the last 60 days. I can filter content if I'm just looking for fiction, if I'm looking for documentaries, perhaps nonfiction DVDs, I can filter that. If I am just looking for children's DVDs, I can filter down to children. It's just going to show me those movies, uh, brand new movies, same criteria that are all marked as junior. So here we go. We've got all these family movies here. I can even narrow down based on form and genre. So feature films, comedy films, children's films, topics. I can narrow down by children's, all these types of items and languages, ratings, and tags. So just some tools there to help you when you are doing your search. Now let's go back up to the top and I'm going to click explore again. So this is a really good shortcut if you're just looking for a book, uh, maybe bestseller fiction books. So I'm just gonna click bestseller. And here we have a full list of all the bestseller titles. Okay, so available now, it's actually gonna tell me all of these titles are available right now. You can see um, some really popular things from the ashes that we looked up earlier. Let's go browse all bestsellers. Ooh, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so see bestsellers in the United States. You can actually see the list. So Globe and Mail bestsellers is here. Canadian independent booksellers bestsellers are here and then for the US we have indie bestsellers and the New York Times bestseller list the big list right okay so that's just another way to search for those titles the other thing that I want to show you here is ebook and e-audio this is going to um, move you directly it's going to redirect your browser right over into download library where you can see all those e-audio and e-books so right now of course when the library is closed this is a really good tool for you to have a look at what's available for you to read on your computer your tablet your phone that sort of thing so audio books and e-books available for you if you have any questions about Download Library or you're not familiar with it, please go back to the library's Facebook page and search for the How to Use Libby video um, where I go through exactly how to use Download Library in Libby. And it's a really great tool to get you started, to get you orientated so that um, you're, you're prepared to use that and how to sign in as well. Okay, so that's kind of a um, good overview of Biblio Commons and the things that are available there for you. The other thing I want to do is just show you the options that are available here under your my, your my Account. So I know we already kind of looked at my library dashboard where it shows you all those different features. As well, I want to show you my borrowing. So Checked Out is a great tool for seeing what you currently have at home. And um, in regular times when the library service is operating as normal, it's a great place for you to check to actually renew those items that you might have at home as well. So checked out is there, on hold is there. You can see all the items that you've placed on hold and where you are in line, when you might be able to pick those up so you get a good idea of when they might be available for you. You can check borrowing history, fees. You can have a look at your for later shelf, your completed shelf, all of that good stuff. Now here's another tip just in case anybody um, is having this problem right now. Biblio Commons does store your library card number. So if you, for example, are at home and you have auto saved your login to Biblio Commons, you can actually log into Biblio Commons and go to your profile in the top right and my settings. And underneath here, it's going to show your barcode. So if I click display, all of a sudden I have my barcode number there. So this is a great tool um, when you're kind of searching around, maybe you're gonna to go to the library's webpage and use consumer reports. This is just a tip that this is where you can find your barcode another place if you um, don't have your physical card, for example, or you can copy it here and save it to your computer elsewhere. Uh, I just wanna show you also on the side in my settings, you can change your email. 
You can check your username and change it. You can also change your PIN. So if your PIN is the last four digits of a phone number that you don't really use anymore, for example, you can change that. You can have a look at your account preferences, saved searches, holds, and pickup locations. So sometimes people um, have, for some reason, uh, or accidentally, have set their, not set their preferred location or set it to a library that they no longer use. Maybe you lived in Stratford and you moved to St. Mary's. Um, have a look here at this preferred location because that's also going to determine when you place holds which library pulls them off the shelf for you and where we are anticipating that you're going to pick it up. Okay. You can also change your privacy settings here. So you can change the privacy of your shelves so that they are private and nobody can see them. You can also change my feeds. So that is some extra information there about Biblio Commons. Now, um, I think that's a pretty good overview of the service overall. I'm going to go back to the home page here. But if you have any questions, if you try to log into Biblio Commons, if your username or your barcode and your PIN number aren't working for some reason, get in touch with us, with us at the library. So again, that email is libraryinfo at stmarypubliclibrary.ca. We can help you with that. We can get you your barcode. We can get you your PIN number. Uh, we can answer any questions that you might have about this Biblio Commons service and get you going there. Okay, and again, if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions or any feedback about this video or any other videos that you would like to see from the library, please leave it in the comments, send us a message on Facebook, or send us an email. And have a great day, and thank you so much for joining me today to have a look at Biblio Commons. And one last thing, um, I do recommend that you go back to our Facebook page and check out the other videos available there for you, because we do talk about things like the Libby app, Tumble Books, all of those fun things. So it's a great way to get to know what the library has available. Okay, thanks for joining me.